Welcome everyone to our next virtual networking event of Empower Africa. My name is Shai Bernstein. I'm VP of Business Development and Partnerships at Empower Africa. Today's event is part of our new series of monthly events on driving business in Botswana. As you can see, this is a virtual networking event. Okay, so feel free to walk around, double click on any open chair that you see next to you. And please be sure to look at the center, bottom center of your screen and turn on your microphone and camera. You can see on the center, you know, bottom of the of your screen, the two icons, just like Zoom or Teams, and uh, and so on. Before we continue, for those of you who are joining us for the first time, Empower Africa is a business community with a mission to drive investment, trade, and job creation in Africa. We believe in trade over aid, and that business is the best way to grow, build, and create sustainable and scalable solutions. We believe in bringing good people together, and in the power of synergy. Our goal is to create connections, optimize communication, and maximize on the collaborations. The business community brings together entrepreneurs and SMEs, investors, banks, PEs, VCs, government officials, multinational enterprises, nonprofits to one table to enhance the communication and the collaboration. Um, I'd like to share with you a very short video, uh, one minute and 30 seconds, uh, which explains uh, uh, the, the business community. And there you go. There is so much potential for a business to succeed in Africa. When looking to grow or enter into a new market, it's always more successful when you have the right partners and a supportive community. Empower Africa is a business community for qualified investors, businesses, governments, institutions, and nonprofits from around the world seeking to drive sustainable economic development in Africa. Those who become members of Empower Africa get access to our digital business platform, have opportunities to engage Empower Africa's members and partner organizations, and can attend exciting networking events. Meet with and learn from renowned speakers at one of our virtual networking events, where you can build business relationships with experts in your field and find new partners to offer your services to. Member companies can also have a booth on the conference floor and engage a vetted and quality community that would be interested in their products and services. For investors who are looking for deals or entrepreneurs who have exciting projects, becoming a member means you get deal flow or raise capital on the Empower Africa Business Network. This platform is a private business network with dedicated marketplaces and focused sector and country chat rooms to do business and stay connected from anywhere in the world. Become a member of Empower Africa today and drive business in Africa. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I want to introduce now uh, the founder and CEO of Empower Africa, Ezi Rappaport, for some welcoming remarks. And before Ezi joins us, uh, I just posted now on the chat, you can see on the right side of the screen, there's a chat. I just posted there um, a link to join the Empower Africa business community, okay? So if you're not a member yet, I know I see here a lot of people that already are members, but some that are not yet. So just click on the link in the chat box. You'll see um, uh, the post that I just, uh, the message I just posted and uh, join the Empower Africa business community. Ezi Rappaport, the founder and CEO of Empower Africa, please. Good morning, everybody. And thank you for joining us at our fourth event focused on driving business in Botswana and boosting um, trade, investment, and entrepreneurship in Botswana. I'd like to thank Julius and the whole Botswana Invest and Trade um, Center for their great collaboration and partnership. And I'd also like to thank um, the whole Empower Africa team for their dedication and their belief um, in Botswana. We're a global team and we really believe in Botswana, such a symbolic um, country that has proved success and that has built to success. Botswana is rated as one of the most well-governed countries, not just in Africa, but the world. And it is one of the fastest growing economies in the world. And it is so inspiring to see how this country is transitioning and evolving from extracting minerals to investing in its people and investing in entrepreneurship and the tech ecosystem. And I know that what's, that's what the Botswana Investment Trade Center has engaged us over a year, a year and a half ago. And it's great to be driving this consistency 
to really boost entrepreneurship, boost investment, boost trade. And we are seeing it's uh, Botswana is such a symbolic country and we're seeing already over 80% literacy rates, a great promising workforce and youth that are ready to work. And this is a new era of the 21st century and the ability to connect with people, drive innovation, distribute your innovation is growing faster and faster than ever. Um, so we have great hopes and great expectations um, for Botswana, um, the value creation that's going to be generated for the world from this country. And we're very excited about the continuous um, growing relationship that we have with, um, with the government of Botswana and uh, the businesses on the, on the continent and in, in Botswana. Um, this today's segment of driving business in Botswana, we have the honor of hearing from um, Ms. Mamanta Sankoloba, the CEO of the Tswana Export and Manufacturers Association, who is a thought leader um, in the export industry in Botswana. And I want to thank you so much for, for, for coming and, and honoring us with your presence and sharing your wisdom. But before we, we, we go into the presentation, um, I'd really like to take a moment to recognize that this past month, Botswana lost a great leader, a great leader that um, was fighting for the growth and dedicated so much of his life to, to driving growth um, and investing in trade in Botswana. Uh, Mr. Reginald Celelo, uh, the COO of BITC, the Botswana Investment Trade Center. And I'd like to take a moment and share a video that, uh, that we created in his honor. And um, then we will hear from Tranquila Gabothone, um, the Executive Director of Export Development and Promotion at the BITC um, to really commemorate um, Reginald and the great work and the great life that he lived um, for the people of Botswana. So without further ado, here's a short video on the Reginald. May Reginald, uh, may we continue to learn and be inspired by him and um, really keep, keep the positive force, uh, his positive spirit um, in the world through the good deeds that we do. And let's just take a moment to really learn about him, appreciate him, and, and uh, really take his positive spirit forward. And uh, it, this is very important for us to commemorate Reginald, and we look forward to doing it year after year as well. Um, Trunky, please, I give you the stage to share a few words on Reginald. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. A. Obviously, it's not easy uh, from my end, particularly that I was reporting directly to Mr. Celilo, and he just passed on last week on Thursday. So it's really, really very recent, and uh, he was sent off, or his burial was this week, Tuesday. So it's really, really recent. And as you may know, it's a sad, mo it's a sad moment for us as BITC family. Uh, the Reginald has really contributed a lot in terms of uh, contribution to the development of this country. I must just highlight to say, uh, Mr. Celino was an international trade and investment expert of note. And he has worked uh, in several organizations like your Botswana Exporter uh, Development and Investment Authority, Bejia. I had a chance because I've been working with him since 2006. So you can imagine uh, the amount of time that we've been working together. He has also worked at the Southern African Customs Union, which is SACU, and as well as the US Trade Hub. And uh, this uh, spans for a period of over 18 years. And his key areas of expertise uh, really included investment uh, policy development, 
uh, export development and promotion, international trade law, uh, trade negotiation, and also uh, the business advisory services. And Reggie, as we affectionately called him, he was really a true gem and one in a million and one of the rarest breeds uh, in the professional quarters of this country. He proved to be a true professional who took his job seriously, a fine economist uh, to ever come out of this country. His wealth of knowledge and extensive experience was really unmatched. He was very resourceful and dependable. And as BITC, within BITC, he has groomed a lot of people here in BITC and out, out there. He was someone who was not selfish in terms of knowledge sharing. And indeed, uh, as the Republic, uh, we've lost one of the finest sons. And uh, as a matter of sheer consequence, our nation has been left poorly by his untimely passing. Uh, may his soul rest in peace. Uh, thank you, really. I really appreciate uh, the opportunity that uh, Empower Africa has granted us as we are mourning the passing of Mr. Reginald Silelo. And uh, he, the last uh, engagement that we had uh, with the Empower Africa he was actually giving the closing remarks in one of the sessions that we had with Empower Africa. So he has been very instrumental and very key in terms of uh, pushing uh, the economy of Botswana. So he passed on as the uh, Chief, Chief Operations Officer from BITC. And thanks in Power Africa for your time and also for really recognizing Mr. Salil. Thank you very, very much, Trunky, for your warm words. And I think that, um, you know, at the end of the day, I think we're continuing his will and, uh, you know, his whole mission right here with this event and more events to come. Um, and so uh, we're moving forward onwards and upwards. Um, and it is my honor to welcome uh, Mantala Sankubula, Sankuloba, sorry. Mantala, I'm going to read now a little bit of your bio because uh, I got the, your bio, of course, and it's uh, very long and we want to hear your presentation. Let's take a little bit of highlights, guys. We have to look into her and see what she's been doing. It's, it's fantastic. Currently serving as Chief Executive Officer of the Botswana Exporters and Manufacturers Associations. BEMA. By the way, they have a booth on the bottom left side of the screen. You can come and visit afterwards. She's a chairperson of advisory board of University of Botswana's Department of Marketing since 2018 and a seasoned HR practitioner. Ms. Sankoloba is an experienced professional with significant track record in executive leadership and real-time business practices in the manufacturing and export sector. So to name just a few of the titles and uh, positions that she's holding that she's held. African Women in Business Country Chapter Head of Botswana. She is a professional mentor for women entrepreneurs at Yungwa Africa. She is the founder of She, S-H-E, Networks Global, the co-founder of BEMA Stores, and the country rep for African Honey Consortium. Wow. So like I said, that's only part of it. We just want to move on to the presentation as well as networking later on. So. Um, uh, but incredible track record. Thank you for joining us today, Mantala. The stage is yours. And by the way, while Mantala is uh, getting onto the stage, we're gonna have Q&A um, right after this. Uh, Mantala, you can turn on your mic and camera in the meantime, please. If you look on the right side of the screen, you'll see a Q&A column that you can press. And if you have any questions, while Mantala's presentation, please write them down because once she's done, we're going to have time for some Q&A before we move on to the networking. So please, Mantala, the stage is yours. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Shai, for having me. And uh, thank you for the new name <laughs> that you have bestowed upon me. I, I appreciate you. Um, um, I'm very excited to be here. And thank you so much for um, uh, giving us this platform to talk about our beautiful country, how we do business here in the beautiful Botswana. Um, in a nutshell, it's, it's, a, it's a very beautiful country that you'd want to come and invest in. So before we talk about the, the, our country, I'll speak a little bit about the association that I work for, which is Botswana Exporters and Manufacturers Association. So I'm going to share a, a slide with ourselves. 
Oh, beautiful. Sorry about that. Uh, Botswana Exporters and Manufacturers Association, in short, is, is BEMA, has been around since 1995. That makes it a very youthful child of 26 years old. It has uh, is constituting of over 350 companies that are into manufacturing, and of course, some of them are into exporting, but we do have at least over 40% uh, of our membership that are into exporting, and the most of their exporting destinations are within the southern Africa and with a few that is a little bit over 20 percent that is exporting to the EU market and the American market. So our main role really is to represent the private sector that is of the our sector that we, 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 we are uh, representing which is the manufacturers and exporters on committees at national level at regional level and at global level and we use such representations to uh, offer some kind of advocacy on their behalf to speak on issues that of course are affecting them and obviously are touching mainly on the interests of uh, the ease of doing business and of course having some kind of influence on the policy reforms and formulations or any strategy that affects the doing business of uh, of the manufacturers and the exporters of Botswana. So by so doing, we sit in different committees, of course, at national level. We are co-chairs of the AGOA, uh, which which focuses mainly on the, uh, the, the, the expanding our territories into the American market. We are also the uh, AFCFTA, the African uh, Free Trade Continental Free African Free Trade Continental Trade Agreement. Uh, we are the focal point for the whole private sector. This is where they report the uh, uh, non-tariff barriers. We are also recently been appointed as the SACU Private Sector Chair. You may be aware that Botswana is currently the chair of the, the, the SACU block. So we are representing the private sector in that particular setup. We, as I've mentioned earlier, we do offer the services, which is advocacy, representation, market awareness. We don't only just make our members aware of the existing markets, but we also go a step ahead to solicit uh, markets for them so that we can allow them to uh, have information, the right information about the markets that would uh, be at their disposal. We also are uh, about promoting joint ventures. I think Aziz earlier spoke about uh, collaborations and the joint uh, ventures that is a way to go. We truly are of the view that for Africa to stand, for Africa to develop, for Africa to remain sustainable, it's very critical that we do collaborate as African nations. We do also promote uh, joint ventures. Of course, we naturally offer business consultancy to our members and facilitate for the sustainable employment opportunities. Uh, so these are just some of the, the products that we do have here in Botswana that are, are produced by our manufacturers here. It's a long list. Of course, we do have ag uh, those that are of agriculture, um, you know, the, the products themselves and equipments, uh, the, the, the list is here, the construction products, the um, electricity cables and goods. Uh, we have also the firefighting products. We have furniture. We have the, the textiles, the, the garments manufacturers. We do have the information technology. We have the jewelry arts and crafts. We have uh, textile mills. Currently, we do have at least two uh, textile mills, and that is where we may also need to focus on soliciting for investment in this particular area so that our textile can also flourish. We do also have our members who are into the tourism service value chains, as well as the vaccines and the automotives. A short synopsis about Botswana. Uh, Botswana is a land linked. I know usually we would be referred to as a landlocked country, but we have come to accept and celebrate ourselves as a land linked uh, country within Southern African region with a land of uh, 582,000 kilometers squares. 
square kilometers. Uh, Botswana has a stable democracy. This is what we celebrate ourselves with, with a population of well over 2.3 million people. Our nation's adult literacy rate, as depicted by the World Bank, is impressively at at least 83 percent and this is this is something that we also as as Botswana do pride ourselves with stable currency of course we do have that uh, national language that we speak is Botswana and official business language that we usually use is English our economic overview uh, Botswana is ranked the third in sub-Saharan Africa in terms of economic development. Uh, we have over the past few years attained a satisfactory GDP growth. Um, even at the advent of COVID, we still uh, hold our head above the waters in terms of our economic growth. Uh, the nation's priority sector is being promoted for investment, and I think uh, BITC can also attest to this, it includes uh, manufacturing, um, agriculture, mineral sector, ICT, health, pharmaceuticals, um, and also the, the, the energy sector, the green energy. Uh, it's, it's an area that we, we do uh, promote largely to ensure that we, we, can, we can grow in that particular sector. Our main exports comprise of mineral. Our major imports include machine food stuff, petroleum products, and metal products. And we do pretty, import pretty much every other thing, except, of course, just a few that we, we are heavily involved in. And this is a good picture that we could still, as a country, have. Uh, a lot of investment in areas that we ex import commodities thereof. According to the Fitch Solutions, Botswana's economy is expected to be set on a growth tra trajectory over a period of 2021 and 2020. And I think it's very evident we have seen that uh, growth uh, between the, 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 the end of 2020 and the uh, beginning of 2021. Investment opportunities in Botswana. There, there is quite a, a lot of uh, opportunities in Botswana, as you may say, especially for the sector that I represent, manufacturing. It's a very uh, sector that would still have a whole big room for growth. And to allow that to happen, because sometimes there would be a fear that uh, we may be a small populated country with uh, uh, 2.3 million people that would uh, reflect as a small market but we are very quick and always um, excited to share don't only focus on the domestic market as the market that we are but we also solicit for other markets on the export um, arena so to allow our companies to play in the other markets outside our country we do have the bilateral and multilateral trade agreements that we have uh, with, with, with other trade blocks, such as the, the AGOA. AGOA offers a lot of tariff benefits for uh, countries within the sub Saharan uh, Africa, including. So, we do have a strategy that we have just reviewed recently that allows our companies in Botswana to comparative and competitive advantage over other companies that would be eyeing the Agoa market. We have recently aligned ourselves again to ensure that where we were lacking, uh, because you, you may be aware that we are still very young in the uh, export activities for, for, for the Agoa market, but this is something we are working on as a country to ensure that our Companies are capacitated enough to, to explore such markets. We also have the trade block of the SACU AFTA, which also has an advantage as a country. We also have the SADC EU EPUS, of course, which again offers better tariff uh, rates for our goods to be exported in such markets. 
And also you can realize that even for this one, uh, particularly for commodities that we are not indoored a lot in terms of the in terms of the, 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 the raw materials, it allows us to have uh, accumulation that would allow us to have an advantage even if we don't have the origin of the product to some extent. We would have a certain percentage that would take advantage of such uh, tariffs. Why should we invest in Botswana? Why Botswana? Uh, Botswana highest investment grade in sovereign credit ratings in Africa is the third freest economy in the current Africa with regulatory environment with outrageous growth, encourages growth. It's Africa's fourth investment destination with the competitive corporate tax rates and robust So these are our top local business opportunities can be explored by our potential investors. We do have the automotive sector. Uh, we have the mining sector. The automotive sector is actually falling under our, under our special economy, which comes with uh, unlimited uh, incentives that an investor would enjoy. We also have the mining sector, beneficiation, uh, we have the cargo and logistic. We have the hi everyone. Apologies for the technical issues. We're having some uh, uh, issues, as you can see, but we're back on, and Natalia now can uh, uh, can hear us, and we'll continue presenting. Um, she's going to wrap up the presentation now in a few more minutes, and then we'll move on to the Q and A, followed by more networking. Okay, so stay tuned. Um, Mantala Kitso, please, the stage is yours. Okay. I think I had, I had explained a bit on the, the opportunities that we have here. Uh, on the, I had stopped with the financial and the business services. And then the next one is the, the leather and leather uh, products or leather goods, which of course entails of anything that is uh, a product that is of leather. Remember that we are heavily endowed, uh, blessed with the with with cows, and unfortunately, we only do um, uh, explore the the beef side of it without necessarily uh, exploring the whole uh, belly chain. Uh, and of course, leather and leather goods would would uh, be a very lucrative space to invest in because we already have the um, the raw material thereof. So all we need is, uh, of course, a leather pack, which our government here has been working on establishing, and hopefully that will happen soon so that we can uh, start uh, playing actively in this particular space. And we do, of course, have a lot of opportunities within the agriculture sector, uh, be it grain, be it, um, of course, uh, the, the, the dairy farming, uh, the beef products, of course, the um, Irrigation, which is the the, 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 the whole daily chain of, uh, of of agriculture, really. Um, we also have the the health, the pharmaceutical uh, side of things, which of course would entail of the manufacturing of the pharmaceutical uh, products, uh, also as well as the, the the medications. We are also endowed with the natural resources. Uh, we have the likes of the uh, Singaparile, which is the devil's claw, which can, amongst other natural products that we have here, indigenous products that we have here, could be explored heavily to allow ourselves to explore the, the indigenous value chains. And we do have, of course, manufacturing sector, which I alluded to earlier, that it's a very infant growing sector, which has an, an amazing ample of opportunities to explore of which uh, I had shared uh, those that we have uh, already within within our country, but we still have room to, uh, you know, manufacture a whole lot of communities that would uh, be ready for uh, or get towards uh, domestic consumption as well as the export markets. And we do have, of course, the uh, information communication technology sector or services 
uh, which of course uh, still has a room to be explored. There's quite a number of investment areas such as the e-commerce space, uh, such as the software and app development. And also we have uh, TV, television broadcasting opportunities that uh, can also be explored in, in our country. We do have only one private uh, television uh, broadcasting station, and it would be great as well to have uh, quite a number of players in this particular space. Botswana export industry essentials. This is what you need uh, to acquaint yourself as an investor when you are intending to invest and export from Botswana, which is something that we would be happy to to, 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 to see happening. Uh, you have to familiarize yourself, of course, with very important documents that are there to assist you, to caution you as an exporter to do better in the sector. That is the national export strategy that was formulated by the government, of course, in partnership with the private sector. Uh, we also have the industrial development policy, the IDP, which of, of course also uh, is geared towards assisting companies or the business to uh, be cushioned and do better in their own space. We also have the Botswana Trade Policy Framework. We have as well the static industrialization policy, which we as a country as well align ourselves with to ensure that we are also part of the static industrialization uh, endeavors and as well as allow ourselves as a country to explore the value chains within the uh, static block space. Our role as the Botswana Exporters and Manufacturers Association, of course, representing the private sector, is uh, main, amongst many other that we do. We have collaborated, of course, with the local, um, with the, the, the uh, embassies around the country. We have the British Councils, we have the likes of the US aid trade hub. Of course, we have uh, quite a number of programs that we are running uh, that allows the companies to, to, to be familiar with the uh, markets and also to have the information that they can use that is consumable, uh, that is also useful for their business to, to, to be able to penetrate such markets. We also have in place the, um, the Bema stores, which is an online uh, e-market platform that allows companies to sell not only within Botswana, but also allows uh, locally made products to also uh, be, be accessed globally. We have had such a great experience. It's only one year old uh, a platform, but it has really done well in terms of uh, allowing our local products to be uh, accessible to the global market. Um, we also are the focal point of the AFCFTA. The AFCFTA, of course, is the bigger African market which we as a country are anticipating to fully take advantage of so that we can also grow our market base and also explore partnerships and collaborations within the uh, African space. We also, of course, as I mentioned earlier, are the private sector chair for the SACU block. Uh, as, as, as you, I, I had alluded earlier that Botswana is chairing currently uh, the, the, SACU, the SACU block. So we are sitting on behalf of the private sector. That means that the private sector in Botswana would have uh, a leeway or a room or even a platform to contribute positively towards the the blocks uh, policies that would allow for business within SACU to, 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 to do well or to work together inter-regionally to allow such uh, impediments to doing business within the SACU space to be eliminated or to be alluded to uh, as, as far as fast as possible. And we, of course, also are the chairs of the Algoa um, reference group uh, here in Botswana to also allow our local companies to explore the American markets. So that is all I have for now. So thank you. I think a whole lot of other areas we will touch uh, through the Q&As. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Mathala, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Wonderful. I can. Thank you. Okay, so let's move on to the Q&A and then we'll move on to some uh, networking. 
Um, what criteria does a fellow exporter or manufacturer have to meet to be a part of your association? Okay, it, it's very simple. You just have to be a legally uh, registered company in Botswana. You should have all the legal documents of you being a manufacturer or an exporter. And then you come, you, you can connect with us. Uh, we are very active on our social media platforms. Uh, you can just type Botswana Exporters and Manufacturers Association, and then you get us there. We are very quick to, 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 to respond to, to all the, the pleas and everything. Right. So you just have to be registered and actively be, be a manufacturer or an exporter. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, people are asking if you can share the presentation. Most definitely. We will share the presentation. Wonderful. wonderful. You will share so, the, the emails? Okay. Cool. Wonderful. So, we'll so the, all, yeah. no, no, great. So anyone who's interested in the presentation, feel free to either reach out directly to Mantala or speak to us, and Mantala will share with us, and we will share with you guys, okay? Either way. Um, how is the implementation of the AFCTA so far in Botswana in terms of challenges and okay. success? Okay. Um, currently, as Botswana, we, we have not yet implemented, implemented as in actively implemented, but we are working on the ratification part, which, of course, we are still working, of course, with the government. It's, it's right. the government's baby to, to drive that, of course, with the uh, a whole lot of engagement of the private sector. But what we know is that uh, we will ratify when they are ready with the all the documentations and all the the checks and balances of, of every other thing that they need to check but hopefully it will be soon because we are anticipating that the sooner we do it the better we are for let's do it as quickly as possible right fantastic yes. fantastic i think it's going to be an amazing it's a tremendous boost for the economy of course throughout the continent um yeah. So there's a question here, which I think you touched a little bit, but maybe we'll just go over it again for, for those that didn't hear. What are some of your priority sectors? Okay. Um, we have a number of priorities at test There are 10 of them. We have the ICT. We have the mining sector, and there's also the, 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 the beneficiation part of it, of, of mining. We have the manufacturing sector. We have the leather and leather uh, products. Uh, we have the we have the uh, uh, we have the. Let, let me just check the automotive. Yes, uh -huh. we have the uh -huh. automotive sector. We have the we have the the agriculture. Of course, we we can't do without agriculture. So that is just one of the the the, the main. Um, um, sectors that we have provided advertised in and we do have i think under under manufacturing we must note that we have uh, the likes of textile uh, that has done well over the past years and we still believe that with the right investment in place we can do well because back in the day around before the the recession in the 2018 we were doing extremely well especially for the export market and we do believe that with the right investment in place, we can still uh, secure a lot, a lot of uh, markets uh, in the export space because we do have skilled manpower who, right. of course, have shown their you know strength over over the years and have shown um, the, the excellence in the work that they do. So we truly believe that if we have the right investment in place, we would definitely do even better than we are doing now. And we do have, of course, uh, the indigenous sector. We are heavily endowed. We are blessed with a lot of indigenous products. Of course, now we are exporting them as raw as they are, but right. with the right investment in place and every other thing in place, we will do extremely well in exploring the value chains of, of such sectors. Right, right. Yes. fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so let's do two more, two last questions before we go on to the networking. Um, here's a good one. Can international companies that want to set up shop in Botswana, right, as exporters join, or is it only for local companies? It's, it's, it's not only for local companies. We have, um, we actually have a strategic, we have strategic partnerships or collaborations with other associations internationally. We have recently signed an MOU, a working MOU with the importers and exporters of India. And we are exploring many others internationally to allow even their companies or 
to also explore what to see what they can explore within the Botswana space because we believe that it's not only about selling it's also about investments it's also about partnerships it's also about skill sharing which is something that we truly want to explore with our with our counterparts around the world so right. we are we, we are not limiting our services to just the the local companies right okay fantastic and last question from our friend brian lamar um what value is Botswana generating from AGOA exports? Um, the value of AGOA exports it's it's extremely low. Um, it's it's extremely low, below 300, uh, 300 uh, million US dollars, uh, because we we have we are not doing so well with AGOA. That is why. Currently, we are doing, um, we have just done the, 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 the review of our strategy, which of course, our hope is that we will, with the strategy, um, be able to attract investment, both domestically and uh, FDI, to allow for, 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 for us to, to explore such. And also as the private sector, uh, also soliciting a, a number of things that we do believe that the government can actively engage to allow companies or to enable companies build their capacity so that they can explore uh, that market. Currently, we do have only two products that we are, explore, we are explore, exporting to, to Agoa, which is the indigenous products, of course, uh, and, the, and the arts and crafts. That, that is what we, we are exporting currently. But we will do better. We can do better. Uh, if, if things would, would go the way that the new strategy is, is, uh, is, uh, is depicting. Right. Okay. Wonderful. Wonderful. Great. Thank you so much. I know that there are more questions, but there are even more questions that people have that they haven't written down here. We want to leave enough time also for networking as well. What I suggest is um, you can come visit um, uh, Mantla now in uh, the booth. Okay. It's on the bottom left side of the screen. And you can also communicate directly with her or through us. We're happy to facilitate and help if you have any questions about driving business in Botswana and uh, any other questions, of course, for uh, um, uh, Mantla herself, we're happy uh, uh, to help. Um, so before we finish, um, first and foremost, um, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, we overcame the technical difficulties. Um, it was of those challenges. and. Um, I'm uh, very happy that you came, uh, very meaningful event. And um, yeah, don't forget to join us for, and you know, stay tuned for the monthly reoccurring Driving Business in Botswana event. Um, uh, also again, I'm gonna put in the chat box, the general chat box right now, the link to join the Empower Africa Business Community if you haven't yet. And of course, download the app so you can see it on your mobile as well. Next week on Monday the 30th, we have our Meet the Members virtual networking um, uh, uh, event, and we have Alejandro Marabi, who's a senior R&D manager at PepsiCo, okay? Um, and of course, we have our next monthly event of Africa's Emerging Tech Ecosystem, September 14th, uh, Africa's Emerging Tech Ecosystem with Zach George, managing partner at Launch Africa Ventures. And if you want to hear any more uh, uh, information, of course, about our events, there's going to be more information about more events coming soon. Uh, thank you very much for joining us and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Enjoy the rest of the networking now. Stay healthy and safe. Take care.